Welcome. Today we're going to talk about parallel lines cut by a transversal. Now we have a parallel line L and a line M. These are two lines that are parallel to each other. And the red line is our transversal. Now L and M, those are the names of the lines. And two vertical lines next to each other are the symbol for uh, parallel. So you can see there's some of these words around here, alt interior, alt exterior, consecutive interior, consecutive exterior, and corresponding angles. Um, consecutive exterior is not in every book, but I have seen it in some books, so that's why I mention it. Um, so, definitions of each of these. Now, please notice we've got one group of angles with the uh, top or this parallel line, and you have a different group of angles with the other. Whenever we're working with parallel lines cut by a transversal in any of these, let's see, two, four, five different groups of types of angles or relationships of angles, Whenever you're doing that, you pick one from this group and one from this group. Never two from the same group for any of these five. Okay? So one from one group and one from the other. Not two from the same group. Okay? So now that we've talked about that, let's get to the definitions and then I'll come back to the screen and show you all the different pairs that make that up. So for all these, again, we're talking about one angle for each of the parallel lines. Alternate interior angles. Angles that are in between the two parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. Alternate exterior angles. Angles that are on the outside of the two parallel lines and also on opposite sides of the transversal. Corresponding angles. Angles that are on the same side of the parallel line and the same side of the transversal um, in the same position, you might say, for each line. Then you have consecutive interior angles. Angles that are between the two parallel lines and same side of the transversal and consecutive exterior angles, angles that are outside the two parallel lines and on the same side of the transversal. So let's go back, once you've gotten a chance to write all this down, go back and uh, fill those out. So alternate interior angles. Interior, between the two parallel lines. So C, D, E, and F are all between the two parallel lines. If C is one of my alternate interior opposites, now I have to go down here and I can't pick E, I have to pick F because it's on the opposite side, alternate. So angle C and angle F are two uh, alternate interior angles. Well, that implies angle D and angle E would also be a pair of alternate interior angles. Now let's look at alternate exterior angles. Exterior. A, B, and G, H are in the exterior. They're outside. It doesn't matter if this is this way or if it's been tipped up or sideways. It's between versus outside. So if we take A, that's going to be alternate interior with H, opposite sides of the transversal. Angle A, angle H. Well, B and G are alternate exterior.
Let's look at corresponding angles next. Corresponding, in the same position. So C is in the same position as G. It's on the same side of the transversal, in this case below it, and it's below the parallel line that makes it. So angle C, angle G. How about A and E? They're both to the left of the transversal and above the parallel line that makes it. Angle A, angle E. Now let's look at the other side of the line. D and H. Now notice those are to the right of the transversal and below the parallel line. And finally, B and F. I ran out of room there. Angle B, angle F. Those are corresponding to the right and above. All right, let's take a look at the next consecutive interior. We know it's between the two lines. And again, sometimes it uh, helps to think, there is your interior. Okay. So, consecutive on the same side of the transversal and between the two lines. C and E. Angle C and angle E. Now, I am not putting these in to imply that they are equal in size. I'm just trying to show you where the angle is. So please do not think that those are the same size. Some of the others, yes, but not those. And D and F are consecutive interior. Now let's look at consecutive exterior. Outside, same side. B and H. A and G. All right. So there are your list of the different types of angles that are angle pairs in parallel lines cut by a transversal. Now, we've already gone through this. Now, there's another thing I want to talk about, and that is alternate interior are congruent. Congruent means uh, the same size, and in this case, also the same measure. All right, so if it's the same size angle, it's got the same degree measure. Alternate interior are congruent to each other, and this is the symbol for congruence. It looks like an equal sign with a wavy line over it. Um, alternate exterior are congruent. Corresponding are congruent. Consecutive interior are supplementary. Of course, supplementary means adds up to 180 degrees. So if you took the measure of one of the supplement of the consecutive interior angles and another of that pair, the two measurements add up to 180. Consecutive exterior are also supplementary. So um, if we go back to here, A and E, same size. B and uh, G, same size. Alternate in T exterior, those would be alternate exterior. C and F are the same size. Um, e and D would be the same size. 
their alternate exterior. What's interesting, when you get into geometry, one of the things, because this is our Algebra 1B class, but one of the neat things about geometry is if you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, then it forces these sets of uh, angles to be congruent. And the reverse is forced to be true. If, say, C and G are congruent and they're corresponding angles, then these two have to be parallel lines. Interesting. All right. So, and then any two consecutive interior or consecutive exterior are going to be supplementary. See? these two add up to 180, so if this one and this one are the same, then this adds up to 180 with this. It's fun to play with. All right, let's take a look here. Another type of angle relationship, vertical angles. When two lines cross, uh, and form four angles, one, two, three, four, opposite angles, uh, angles opposite to each other are called vertical angles. So one and three are vertical, four and two are vertical. Now this isn't vertical like a vertical line type vertical, this is just across from each other, and that's why they refer to them as vertical. Um, vertical angles are the same size or congruent, and in this example, one and three are vertical, and two and four are vertical. So, if we take a look at this, separate information, a linear pair is a pair of angles that share a side, and the outside sides form a straight line, and are supplementary angles. So, let me just do this. This is the side that A and B share. This is the other side of angle B. This is the other side of angle A. And it makes a straight line. And what separates B and A is this line, which is one of their sides. When it's set up like that, this is a straight line that makes 180 degrees. It's going to be supplement, a pair of supplementary angles. So they call that a linear pair. So if I look down here and I say angles one and three are vertical angles. Angles one and two are a linear pair. One and four are also a linear pair. Three and four would be a linear pair. Three and two would be a linear pair. Two and four are vertical angles. If I were to give you a measurement, let's say 120 degrees, and I said, okay, tell me how big is angle one? Well, you know one and two are a linear pair, so they're supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. So angle one would have to be 60 degrees if that's the case. Now, I could say, all right, how much is angle four? You'd have to tell me, well, there's two ways I can answer that. I can say 120, and it doesn't matter which way I'm going to answer the reason, it's going to be 120. I could say the reason for that is that angle 2 and 4 are vertical angles, and so therefore the same size. Or I could say angle 4 is 120 because angle 1 is 60 because they are a linear pair. And then I could do the same kind of thing down here with angle 3 and call it 60 degrees. And I could say, well, there's three different reasons I could give for that to be the case, given the information already in the diagram. 
I could say three and two are a linear pair, supplementary angles. I could say one and three are vertical angles, con uh, congruent. I could say three and four are a linear pair, so therefore a pair of supplementary angles. And those are just a few of the ways you can answer questions about this. Now let's take a look at our last example. All right. And this is what I will often do with students in class. I'll say, okay, I know angle A, it's 50 degrees, and I know that these two black lines are parallel to each other, and they're cut by this orange line, which is a transversal. If that is true, tell me how big another angle is and why. And somebody might say, oh, H is going to be 50 degrees because A and e H are alternate exterior angles. Exactly right. You might say angle F is 50 degrees. And you could say the reason that is the case is because A and F are vertical angles. True, because this is a pair of vertical angles two lines crossing. Um, so that would be another uh, a reason. If you already have H now, you could say F and H are um, corresponding angles, and that would be a reason why those two are congruent, uh, you know, why F is 50. Uh, you can then proceed to say C is 50 degrees, and you could say C is 50 because C and F are alternate interior angles. Or you could say A and C are corresponding angles. So there's lots of reasons why you could give that uh, information. Now, um, let's see. If I were to say, given this information, what's angle D is in dog? you'd have to say that's 130 degrees. And you might say that C and D are a linear pair, or D and H are a linear pair. Or you might go back to here and say A and D are consecutive exterior angles, also supplementary. Uh, you could then say E is 130 degrees. Lots of reasons for that. A and E linear pair, E and F linear pair, uh, E and D alternate exterior, uh, E and H consecutive in exterior rather. Um, so those are all reasons you could give. G is 130. Again, you could go through a whole list of different things as to why that's the case. Uh, D and G are vertical angles. G and H, G and C, both uh, linear pairs. G and F, consecutive interior. G and E, corresponding. And then finally, I can say angle B is 130. And I can say that for a plethora of reasons. And if you've ever seen The Three Amigos, you know what the word plethora means. All right, uh, that's it for today. I'll let you go ahead and work on your worksheet. Have a great day.